Hello and welcome to the Abyss Perfectum. Uh, this is tier 6. There is a couple of level 200 Lufinia stages and a couple 1... One stage is level 200 and something and the other... Um, and another stage that's level... Lufinia Plus. Basically. Now for this first uh, stage, I decided to use Sid Reigns and Yuna because it's the Sid Reigns bosses. Or better said, it's the Keys bosses, but Sid Reigns deals with them way better because they have high turn rate and they want to step in front of you. Well, Sid Reigns and Aphmau say no to that. Like, no thank you, I don't like you, you're not cool, your gimmick is not fine. And so, this is the basic Sid Reigns, uh, Sid and Mao combo. The reason why Bart isn't here is because you need a green crystal alongside a staff. And neither Sid nor Aphmau are staff, so I needed to bring a BT that's compatible with this team and at the same time that can help do um that can fulfill Bart's role, let's say, and the best one is Yuna as well as fulfill the conditions. Yuna's a staff, she has <laughs> a lot of buffs. I didn't want to bring Garnet here because quite frankly I feel like these sharks are a waste of everybody's time. <laughs> you know, honestly, so what I usually do is I have my Imperial and Enchant on Yuna, so the Kurosama is on Yuna because these guys are not taking any turns, so I'm not going to give them any chance whatsoever to take a turn. So I just pop Kurosama straight off the bat. Yuna's also never getting another turn. Like, that was it for her. So she has my Imperial and Enchant. She has the powerful BT and the powerful Auras. We of course have Key's Call because, um... Well, if you don't have Bards, <laughs> you should have Key's Call in a launch comp. Um... So of course, Yuna... No turns whatsoever needed because her BT doesn't ramp up like Bart's does, so... She does not need to take any other turn, and there's the turn rate in case you were wondering where it was. There it is, they are very nasty. And then it's just regular Sid Mouse now. You just need to make sure that Sid and Aphma are the ones taking turns and not you know. The orb is basically launch. <laughs> so yeah. Really easy tier.
all right so the next one or the first one if you are actively doing this in order it's going to be the masks now the masks are pretty easy to deal with let's say kind of sort of not really i chose to bring um garnet here because the teams that you use here will not get locked out of the Lufinia Plus or the next stage, the stage that you crafted these. So it doesn't matter because you'll be able to use Garnet on the last stage anyway. So don't save Garnet thinking, oh my god, what am I gonna do on the last stage if I put Garnet on this small tier? It doesn't matter. <laughs> you can even use Machina. I, that was actually my mistake because I could have crushed these stages a lot more, but I refused to use Machina. <laughs> anywhere because i thought that they would lock me out but no they don't so use machina wherever you want and on whatever tier you are struggling with i used garnet on this one because she kind of sort of fulfilled the condition with her ld so she can kind of sort of uh stop the orb plus she does a lot of aoe damage and i didn't want to bring twins because uh, if i'm not mistaken i use the twins on another tier but anyway i brought tifa I brought the teacher. I brought Garnet. Tifa's pretty good for this because she, her EX actually launches. Um, these, uh, if you pop these masks in Transcendence, they are no different. They literally have the same condition. They just have less HP and are less of an annoyance to deal with. I just brought Quistis because I wanted to delay the ever loving crap out of them like they they are not getting a turn on my watch it's not happening okay <laughs> like no thank you and i brought garnet to raise tifa's damage and tifa to do ooga booga damage to them <laughs> pretty self-explanatory team nothing complicated here i just burst with garnet uh immediately then burst with garnet with a sid rain's call got them down to as low as humanly possible and then finished them off with tifa it's quite literally a very easy team uh, a very cheap if you want to call it team <laughs> it's definitely not here to allow these guys to have a turn or to make their life easy no it's here to make my life easy <laughs> my life is very easy <laughs> with this team Now for the third or part one apparently this is apparently part one yeah i know it's a little bit weird how i recorded these but this is actually the only tier that cannot be knocked back it's also so sid brains doesn't work here 
launch doesn't work here plus these guys are very annoying because they get uh they need to be insta broken they are the same as the Sioran bosses so if you have setter bring setter here he will make short work of them uh i forgot setter but pronto can actually uh, break them so that's the reason why i brought pronto porum and um ace because Prompto is a guarantee break on his counters, so I decided, yeah, you know what, you wanna be a douche. But I'm fairly sure that other people can do this way faster, like for example with a Machina and a Scepter, I think you can tear this team, this tier to absolute, like, high heavens. I just didn't want to use Machina because at this point in time I wasn't sure that I was gonna be able to use the people that I had already used on the higher stages but now that i know different i would have actually used machina here <laughs> like this is where i would have put the boy because <laughs> because these people oh machina and setzer would have taken care of them no problem like not even a cinch as it stands the team that i actually used is a bit of a stally one like it'll take me a while to kill them basically um so this is gonna run a little bit on the long side because it um, just takes ages to deal with these guys. Because you have to time prompt those counters so that you're able to break them. It's a little bit more of a... Um, it's a little bit more of a hassle than if you had just bought Setzer and been like, I don't give a shit, I'm doing max bravery damage to you guys, and period, like, that would have been the smarter play on my part, but this is what I was thinking of, half asleep and waiting for something at work to pop up, so, uh, this is the team that I used, it worked out perfectly, and Ace is actually perfect for the orb. The orb condition is, uh, they take damage based on something that goes down, Ace's traps go down when they do damage, they, um, keep the orb in check phenomenally well. So if you want to use Ace and Machina here, hey, and get a type 0 run, <laughs> it's really a great stage to do that, um, Aside from that, everything is like self-explanatory. They, they are, they do do a lot of damage when they are in their red aura. So I was, I do like this team a lot. I'm not gonna lie. Pronto was really good here because if I had Orin, I would have constantly been like panicking that they would have been able to one-shot him. Because I thought about Orin too, but. And bursting here is absolutely a pain in the ball. Like, if you can find a time to actually burst, like, not BT+, plus, but actually burst, you're a genius. Because I struggled with that so hard. I cannot even... <laughs> I also struggled with maintaining uh, um, Ace's trap quite a bit. So, uh, that was a struggle too, but... <laughs> also, if you end up on Pronto soon, you might not want to hit... You might want to hit the guy who is stunned. The guy who is broken. That's the only advice that I'm giving you. Because Pronto's LD in order for it to go up in stacks and for him to counter, he needs to attack a broken target. So that's the only thing that I would recommend you watch out if you're actually going to use the same team. But again, I would recommend Setzer and Machina and just shredding this a new one. <laughs> You will have an easier time than I do.
now the final tier is um a bit of a strange one i struggled a little bit with even building a team for this one because they want a lot of elements out of you like they want you to do 200 200 000 damage based on different elements and they each resist the element that the other one is weak to and it's like i know this is supposed to be ali's ace here but a holy mother of god like you have no idea how annoying it was i just i wanted to use twins unfortunately twins just didn't somehow bring enough damage <laughs> i was surprised it's like it's the twins so instead i opted for a triple bt get out of my face i don't want to deal with you whenever i don't want to deal with something it's like i'm busting out the triple bt and let's see how you like me now <laughs> And then this is exactly what this team is. It's just uh oh, so you wanna be difficult. It's a so you wanna be difficult with the orb. Okay, okay. Let me tell you something. Your orb is not seeing an importance with this team, okay? This team is designed to screw you over and it will do that without any kind of problems, and I'm not gonna care about your orb. Even though, technically speaking, Bart fulfills the condition for the turtle and I have uh, Ash on Bart which fulfills the condition for the Kraken. So I was still cautious. <laughs> I was still cautious. But counters here do wonder, so if you actually want to try a counter team with this, you're going to need a lot of Impero and Enchant, which is the thing that I personally found to be super annoying. I just didn't give them a turn. Like I didn't. I burst. Uh, I burst with every one of my characters, and I had caught shred them. That's that's all I did because I didn't want to deal with this. This orb is ridiculous, and I don't like a ridiculous orb. So I was just like, no, thank you. And it's orbs actually, because the elements that they both have don't correspond with each other. So it's like you're going to need two Impero and Enchant somewhere in there <laughs> you're going to need it and kurasame doesn't work they specifically made sure that it wasn't kurasame so you're somehow gonna have to do a bart ash nonsense of some kind or have bart and dish in your team or have bart's call on some counter unit that does off turn damage it's so stupid or if you didn't use machina on the previous year um yeah they don't have enough hp to deal with him <laughs> so if you hate this orb as much as i do and you didn't use machina on the previous year because that tier is at the very least manageable i'd say we have enough units to deal with that but this one was like something out of a nightmare for me at the very least even though I was perfectly fine dealing with the orb when I had my double Impero and Enchant. But Ash's Impero and Enchant only lasts for six turns. <laughs> you know. And then we have like... Who is it? Um, Bart, who needs to be at level 2 for his BT for his Impero and Enchant to trigger. And that only lasts for like seven turns if you're not bursting with Bart again. So it's uh, either way it's a rush down if you're using this method or if you're rushing them down I feel like it's a rush down no matter what if you don't have Alize which at the time that I was recording this I did not have Alize so it was always gonna be a rush down for me like I had no way of naturally controlling this orb and having like defensive characters all around Alize to let her do her damage and I personally don't feel that Alize does enough damage in order for me to even remotely consider using her as my prim primary damage dealer. Like, I'm sorry, I'm fairly sure she's good now. <laughs> she has a level 90, she has an LD, she's not doing Machina damage, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> and with that out of the way... Okay, so this stage, I can't say I didn't try 
to play at fair, I wanted to bring Sid Reigns because apparently the orb was knockback, but then they become immune to knockback for several turns and after they go back below 50% they're immune to knockback altogether. So it's like, okay, you wanna be a dick? I'm just gonna shred you. <laughs> it's just that simple. <laughs> so of course I brought Machina. Agrius for the memes because as you know when the original Abyss which had this boss come out Agri Agrius was actually the queen who destroyed this man's whole career when he came out and she's here to destroy his career again because uh, does he really think that he's that funny that he can do the same bloody schmucking trick like a bajillion times it's like, okay, you don't want to be launched. I'm just gonna do raw damage to you. Let's see how you like me. <laughs> I would say... Eric is important here. A little bit. Like, you do want to give Agrius turns. And you want to make sure that you don't... That you have bravery when you're about to kill the last minion. Because... He, uh, in, uh, as a punishment, let's say, because you smacked his little minions around, he's going to do a bravery attack on you and break everybody if you're at zero brave. Now that's not very good because he can instantly take a turn after your Nefagrius hasn't applied her stun, then he can instantly call back his minions and you'd be stuck in a constant loop of you trying to get rid of the minions. So the best thing is to make sure that your party, at the very least, the party members that are before him, have brave, so that when they are, uh, when he actually, I don't know, goes away, when he actually is triggered, when his minions go away, and he actually triggers that brave attack, that he doesn't instantly get a turn and just ruin all of your, like everything that you've done. Granted, if it's Machina doing the attack, it's not a problem because Machina refunds himself on every attack, so he will be fine in different, uh, but not many other people will be fine. And please note that he still teleports in front of you after a certain number of turns. I think it's 10. But I can't be sure, so make sure that before going into burst mode, you have him stunned or confused or something. Because if he is not stunned or confused, those burst phases will essentially count as the turns and he will immediately pop in front of you, right after you get out of the burst. And then good luck, Salavi, his minions are back, you have to deal with them again. Otherwise, this fight is pretty straightforward. You burst with Machina, you don't burst with Garnet. She is not gonna out damage him. I don't care what anybody thinks of Garnet, she is not out damaging Machina in a burst phase. Okay, last stage. The last stage is um, the mummies that we have in Transcendence. They literally have the same mechanics. You, if you fought them in Transcendence, there is nothing different about them. The only difference now is that we have Machina and Wall Call, and we don't care about their damage. <laughs> it is that easy. It is quite literally one wall call and then Machina bursts the boss down till he is dead. It is that easy. Like this man is not difficult. He was asking for a whooping like what is he doing here? He was just here like a couple of months ago. He was just here and he was just as squishable back then as he is now. 
Play frankly, I feel like this is by far the most disappointing boss that we've had for a best. I'm gonna be honest, like the Quevis beta was so much more interesting than this. Here we got the same bloody boss that we got with the same warp condition, like the same mechanics, nothing interesting or cool about him. He was just the same only we now have Garnet and Machina and he's of course going down harder than he went in the base. Like let's be honest here. Transcendent Let's be honest here, like he, he has no business being back here. He's just here to get his whooping and then get out. So yeah, that was pretty much the one, I mean. The previous stage, I would say the ghost was harder than this guy was. Like, if you manage to beat the ghost, don't worry, this guy will fall to the same team, to the almost exact same team as he used for the ghost. Like, he's that simple. And yeah, that was pretty much abyss. Thank you for watching. I hope this fight was not too difficult. Have a nice day.